Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my Zombie GTX 970 because I recently decided to completely redo the vCore power delivery. Because um, I've had this thing for ages, uh, and when I first got it, like, so I bought this thing on eBay as four parts not working. It's an EVGA GTX 970 SC, so of course the vCore VRM had a dead MOSFET in it. Uh, also, the vCore VRM on this card isn't very good. So I replaced it with a GTX 780 Ti vCore VRM, which is what this over here is. Um, but at the time I did it sort of as like the bare minimum to get the card functional. I briefly tested that the card did run, and in fact it overclocked, to my great surprise, um, quite decently. I think it ran like 1550, though it had some weird, like the performance wasn't really quite where I thought it should be. Um, and it still kind of isn't, but, like, more testing to be done. Um, but anyway, so I sort of, you know, got it up and running, and then just it sort of sat on a shelf collecting dust for forever. And recently, uh, I decided, you know what? I want to redo this thing. Like, I want to do it better. Like, a lot better. So this is the current configuration. Uh, and uh, here is what it used to look like. Um, there we go. Uh, GIMP being a bit slow. Actually, that's probably my hard drive's fault. Not, not GIMP's so much. Anyway, um, yeah, like, I, I store photos on a hard drive, so it doesn't really make sense to store them on an SSD. Uh, but anyway, so this is how it was originally uh, done. Um, and as you can see, basically I flipped the power board, and that's, uh, I flipped the vCore VRM from the GTX 780 Ti, and that's all I did. No, uh, it's a lot more than that. Um, so yeah, this was the, the original configuration. Uh, oh, if you're wondering what's up with the, like, the foam blocks everywhere, uh, that's so that the card doesn't lean forward, um, because we have, like, the cables pulling it down, and the heatsink pulling it down, and it's, yeah. So this is, like, just support to fight against gravity. So, anyway, um, I guess let's start with what this card originally looked like when I got it. Um, and it looked like this. Uh, and it's bad. Like, it's really bad. Uh, so, this is an EVGA GTX 970 SC, as far as... I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the SC model. Like, the, mo the cheapest GTX 970 EVGA offered. Um... And uh, basically the problem with these cards is this vCore VRM over here, because this is a crappy little four phase laid out in basically the worst possible way ever. Um, actually, that's not true. You could make, technically, you could make it even more thermally dense, but it doesn't really get much worse than this, at least with VRM layouts that make any sense. Um, and what I mean by that is basically you have like high side MOSFET and you can see that's the MOSFET that actually failed, right? You can you can see that just burnt a hole straight through itself. Luckily didn't burn a hole into the board. Uh, I have another dead uh, EVGA GTX 970, which actually uses a different PCB. That's not really any better, but different. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have another GTX 970 where unfortunately the high side MOSFET burnt a hole straight through several several layers. So that card is a lot more difficult to actually get up and running, whereas this thing, it's just like a dead MOSFET, so uh, also it killed the driver, if I remember correctly, because I tried originally replacing just the MOSFET and it wouldn't fire up, so probably the driver died as well. Um, but anyway, I, I don't really see a point in repairing this VRM because it's a garbage four phase, and the reason it's a garbage four phase is uh, partially the layout. Um, also, this doesn't come with a VRM heatsink. I, I think I'm pretty sure it doesn't come with a VRM heatsink. I like maybe it came with a heatsink and the eBay seller removed it, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, because there's like no screw holes to like you know hold a heatsink in place over the VRM. So yeah, I like it's it's really bad. Like it's a four phase. The layout is awful thermally speaking because it goes low side, low side, high side, high side, and basically. It's not even about the order in which the MOSFETs are. Like, this this layout actually, like, from a wiring perspective, is very convenient. Um, that's why they've done it this way, right? So, you just have it like this. Basically, there's a bunch of vias over here for ground, vias up here for ground. Uh, like, so your ground connections go through the low sides like this. Uh, then you have, like, a 12-volt strip over here and here. And so, very 
e like from a like a power layout perspective very convenient you get all your grounds and voltages where they need to be without really having to do much um so it makes sense from that perspective but the obvious problem with this vrm layout is that this is about as little space as you could pack these mosfets into um which means they run even hotter than they normally would and that's you know not even considering the fact that these mosfets aren't even good uh, the high side MOSFETs used here are 4C10Ns from on semiconductor. These are terrible. Uh, the only thing I would accept, like, the only th application I consider these acceptable for is, like, memory power delivery. For vCore, uh, yeah, no. Um, and this is why no, right? Like, they burn up eventually. Um, well, I guess if you had enough of them, they wouldn't burn up. But there isn't enough of them here. Uh, as demonstrated by the fact that this one burned up. Uh, I guess it also kind of, like, the card is really old, so... I guess you could argue that, oh, if it just burns up after a few years, um, is it really an issue? As long as it doesn't fail... <laughs> well, from EVGA's perspective, as long as it doesn't burn up within the warranty period, it's fine. Uh, but personally, I prefer it when the cause of death on a GPU is, like, the BGA or something failing, where it's like... You can't, you can't really do anything about that. Whereas with the power delivery, it's like, if the power delivery is good enough, it should outlast, uh, well, basically everything else on the card, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, like, the, the power delivery really shouldn't, just like, like, I have ancient GPUs where the power delivery is still perfectly good, and then there's, like, GTX 970s where, oh, and 980 Ti's where your MOSFETs just die constantly. Anyway, so basically the layout of this is terrible. It doesn't come with a heatsink. The MOSFETs are terrible. Uh, it runs really hot and then, then it fails like this, which is just great. Um, though admittedly that means if you want a GTX 970 to like mess around with e-powering or whatever, they tend to go kind of cheap on eBay because this is actually very common for these. Um, so yeah, not a very good VRM, and I don't see any point in repairing it, because I do actually want to push the card, and this thing fails at stock, right? Like, admittedly, it takes a while, but it does ultimately still die at stock. So, awful VRM, um, so no point fixing that. So, uh, the replacement that you can see here is a vCore VR... Well, it's memory and vCore, so like this down here is the memory VRM. That might actually work wasn't really a priority for me. I just wanted the main 8-phase vCore VRM from the GTX 780 Ti Direct CU2. Um, and the reason I did this to that GTX 780 Ti Direct CU2 is it had a crack in the PCB and there was a BGA issue with one of the memory chips and it was just... The, the card uh, was intermittently not really working that great. So, But the VRM still worked great, so it was like, eh, I'll keep the VRM. I think I also use the rest of it for, like, other spare parts, but anyway. Um, yeah, so this is an 8-phase vCore VRM. Also, from a thermal density perspective, this is not, you know, like, there are... Uh, it's not actually super common on GPUs, but there are GPUs out there where you have, like, VRMs designed specifically so that the VRM itself has good thermal uh, dissipation, so that it doesn't require a heatsink to run cool. Um... And uh, this is not one of those. <laughs> um, but the reason, like, the thing is, usually those VRMs that are specifically designed to actually do a good job of cooling themselves are usually very cost optimized. Um, which, again, like, technically, this GTX 970 is very cost optimized. I don't know why they, like, the, the thing is, um, you might say, oh, but, like, they ran out of space or something. But it's like, yeah, they, they really ran out of space. Um, the memory VRM over here actually looks like, you know, some consideration was made for the thermal density of it. And then there's the vCore VRM, which they've shoved in between the display outputs. I'm assuming the reason it's where it is, because it's more, like, it's pretty typical for NVIDIA cards to have at least one phase that runs off of the PCIe slot. And the reason they do this, uh, one vCore phase that runs off of the PCIe slot, and the reason they do that is basically if you don't plug in the power connectors, you'll have also like one of the memory phases will be hooked to the PCIe slot. And I think on this card, it's like this one, or might, wait, 
well, we'll see it once we uh, once we get to the later photos, which which of these phases is on the uh, PCIe slot. But anyway, so the idea is that you can get the car to put out an image, uh, even if some like the user forgets to plug in the two six pins, and so the card can at least display like an error message of like, "Hey, you didn't plug in the power connectors." Um, so that might be why, because I'm guessing the layer count on this PCB also isn't very high. And I'm judging that off of the fact that it doesn't take a lot of heat to me melt the solder on this board. Because um, on really heavy, high layer count PCBs, like say a 3090 or something, doing any soldering is a massive pain. Because the PCB absorbs so much heat. This doesn't. Which is another reason why that, you know, why this VRM is so bad. It's like, so, they've crammed the MOSFETs in as little space as physically, basically as little space as physically possible. And actually, the only way they could have made this worse is if they put the low sides on the back of the board. Which there are cards that do that. Um, especially Gigabyte cards. Oh, well, you wouldn't, like, like, it's Gigabyte, so that's not particularly surprising. <laughs> but anyway, um... Yeah, so, awful VRM, and honestly, like, what they could have done is, if they wanted this to actually have more of a chance of, like, cooling itself without a heatsink, is move it over here, um, which I think would have probably required rotating the core around, but that's still, like, there are GTX 970s where the V-Core VRM is in the, like, normal location. Um, and yeah, they could have moved it over here, and then the layout they could have gone for would have been like inductor, you know, low side MOSFET, low side MOSFET, and high side MOSFET. And there are actually cards where they have like massive gaps between the MOSFETs. Uh, and then another optimization that I've seen is like exposing the actual like switch nodes and power planes around the VRM so that the PCB is somewhat better at shedding heat into the air. Uh, instead of the heat having to go through the solder mask. So that's something I've seen on, like, say, HD 7950s. Um, also, actually, quite a... I think there's certain... I want to say 4060s that do that as well, where you'll have exposed power planes and ground planes and stuff, just to improve thermal dissipation. But, yeah, this, this doesn't do any of that. <laughs> so basically, like, th they just slap this four-phase on here, and we're like, eh, the, you know, hopefully the airflow from the heatsink will be enough, and for a few years it evidently is. Um, anyway, one nice thing I can say about this card is that it does have Samsung memory. Um, yeah, for, for Maxwell GPUs, you really want the Samsung memory chips, because they just clock way better than the... Actually, I don't think they clock significantly higher, but when you're on liquid nitrogen, they have way fewer issues than the Hynix memory chips. Because, um, like, the memory controller gets weird, and then you need, like, high memory voltage, which the Hynix memory chips apparently don't really like very much. But anyway, I don't have a ton of experience with running uh, Maxwell on LN2. Um, and the only card, actually, that I've run, Mac like, Maxwell card that I've run on LN2 is a Hynix card. And, yeah, it really didn't like that. Like, I could either run high memory clocks or I could run high core clocks. I could not do both at the same time, um, which was uh, kind of frustrating. And apparently with Samsung cards, there is a fix for that where you just shove a bunch of voltage into the memory and then it, like, works even on liquid. Like, you can run high memory and high core clocks if the uh, memory is at a high enough voltage. Um so, yeah, but I haven't actually gotten to do that yet, so we'll, we'll see how true that is uh, if or when I get around to actually running this card cold. Uh, the other thing is the Samsung memory chips scale with voltage to, like, a scary degree. Um, I think it was, like, a GTX 960 that I just had on air cooling, and the memory... I want to say it was scaling to, like, almost two... to, like, two volts or higher. Um... Which is not, like, I'm not really that surprised, but, like, at that po kind of voltage, it starts being kind of concerned. Like, you start worrying about the memory controller on the GPU. Um, but anyway, so, at least it has Samsung memory chips. Um, though, there's really nothing else I can say about this PCB. Oh, I, I guess the memory VRM isn't going to have thermal issues, because, you know. <laughs> if they use this sort of layout, except, like, you know, you'd obviously want to move the... Because this has two low-side MOSFETs per per phase. Um, 
And you like here, you'd have to move the high side up a bit, and then you could have like low side, low side, and then your inductor. Um, and this kind of layout, and then just do it like four phases like that over here. That would have probably significantly helped the, uh, you know, survival rate of the high side MOSFETs on this VRM. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on this uh, PCB. It's not great. Um, so let's make it better. Uh, and we'll start with the initial, taking a look at like the initial uh, setup that I had. So this is from when I first got the card up and running. Um, and yeah, and the power connection wasn't really very substantial. So this connect, like this right here is V-Core. You can see that that's tied into the output legs of the inductors. Um, and then we have these like, uh, it looks like soldering braid. It's not desoldering braid. Uh, it's like, tinned copper wire. Um, it's a lot stiffer than desoldering braid. It also doesn't come with flux in it. Um, but it's really, like, I really like using it because it's, ve unlike copper plates, this is way more flexible. So if you make a mistake or you just, like, you're, like, bending it into position or something, it does, it's way more convenient to work with uh, in that kind of scenario. Um, so, yeah, I like using that for, for these kinds of connections because it can carry a lot of power. Um, and it's just way easier to, to work with than copper plate. Also, if you want to remove it, you don't have to like outright cut it or heat up the entire copper plate, um, to get it desoldered, right? Because if you have a big, thick copper plate, it's not going to bend. <laughs> so then you need to heat up the entire thing to the point that it actually like melts the solder at both ends at the same time, uh, which like it's doable. It's not very fun in my opinion. <laughs> So I prefer using this stuff because it just, like, I'm very bad at planning things in advance. And this material, like, the, the, this kind of braided wire uh, lends itself well to my inability to plan anything. So, because if I want to make adjustments, it's a lot more flexible, literally. So, yeah, anyway. But I do have a copper plate for, like, the ground connection down there. It's not a very thick one. It's very, not, yeah, it's, it's quite thin. Um, and this was the initial setup, and this this looks awful, but it ran. Um, it ran okay. I'm not going to say it ran well, because the oscilloscope shots looked like, well, this. Um, but it could be worse, and there is an awful lot of power loss on here, as we will see uh, later. Though I didn't bother to take measurements to see where all of that power loss is actually happening. Um, though I will mention that the output of that 780 Ti VRM was like 1.34 volts. Um, and the core was only getting about 1.22. So, <laughs> some, like, 120 millivolts just kind of went missing. But we'll go into more detail on where, where the power losses on this card are. Um, because, well, in, th in this scenario, there was a significant amount of power loss in the actual connection over here. But in the, like, when I redid the card, there's actually still a pretty substantial voltage drop. But it's not in the connection, as, as we will see. Um... Anyway, uh, also you can see how incredibly dusty the card was, because, yeah, it was spent, like, forever collecting dust on a shelf. Um, what else do we have? Right, I wanted to show the oscilloscope hookup. Right, so I did want the oscilloscope measurements, so this is how the oscilloscope was hooked up for all of the measurements. Um, so, yeah, there's just some unpopulated capacitor pads behind the GPU core, so I just soldered coax directly to that. And there's a 50 ohm termination at the oscilloscope. So that's what's going on with that. Um, so that's how I'm getting like the oscilloscope measurements. And then uh, let's move on to, uh, yeah, desoldering the power board. So um, I desoldered the power board. And basically the idea with this initial setup was that I had little copper plates that were tying the ground legs. So these legs over here are ground. This is the gate pin. Um, I mean, those aren't legs, but those are like the ground pads, and this is the gate pad for the MOSFET, and well, the MOSFETs are gone. So basically, I'm tying the ground into the switch node, and then the copper plate was soldered to the inductor pads, um, right? And so the current, like the return current from the GPU core would basically flow through these copper plates, and then up into the 780 Ti uh, V-Core VRM, um, like that. Um... So not the shortest connection, but for like initial testing, this was really easy to throw together. Um, 
does like tying it together and you are at least like um like one thing i did when i first started trying to do e-powers was like i would use like ground pads for capacitors and screw holes and the ground pads for capacitors can actually be kind of okay because there tends to be a decent amount of vias for the filtering capacitors but screw holes are terrible okay like they are grounded but their actual like connection to the ground plane is awful so these have basically no current carrying capacity whatsoever and should not be used for like if you're e-powering a card don't use these to carry substantial amounts of current because they won't um like the current like you'll basically just like you'll have massive amounts of voltage loss right because the current is still going to flow one way or another but <laughs> there's going to be a lot of voltage drop uh, across uh, screw holes so these like i do use them for like structural support i do not use them for power because they can't do power um and by structural support i mean like when you're you know dangling a great big uh power board off of a card like this like you'll see here I, i'm using this like um ground pad over here as like structural support right like this is just a rigid p very yeah like this is a solid core copper wire so this is very rigid and so that's just helping uh keep the board up um now i have a better example of that on the back of the board here right you can see same idea we're all screw hole screw hole and this just makes so that the power board doesn't flap around um because that'll like bend the pcb and that's not good for the pcb um the gpu pcb the power board i think would probably not bend that much because where the connections are made but yeah um so i do that like for screw holes i do like using them for like structural support but from a like power delivery perspective actually completely useless so anyway um we've looked at the card with the okay no that's the stock i'm just going to delete that layer at this point uh where was i oh there right so yeah and as you'll you'll notice i actually ended up removing the bulk capacitors that the card had um and the reason i removed them is i just wanted more space for in reinstalling the power board better and like making connections and, and the capacitors were also getting in the way of desoldering the initial setup right because you can see like there's the capacitors and i i somehow need to get at these wires to desolder them so yeah capacitors gotta go so i removed all the capacitors and then uh i also cleaned this mess up because this this is disgusting um partially the soldering but also mostly the dust and the flux and yeah um so where's the cleaned up version oh here's the cleaned up version so as you can see um i just like well okay this is before i ended up washing the pcb but remove the driver ICs because um, we're not going to use them. I mean, I already removed the VRM controller ages ago, but um, yeah, remove the driver ICs. Um, use desoldering braid to clean up all of the pads because the plan is I'm going to sand down uh, this area of the board so that we get uh, access to all of the like power planes. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that. Oh, while I was doing all of this, I came to the... Right, I decided that um, since, like, I'm replacing... Like, the, the card already doesn't use its own vCore VRM, uh, I decided that, you know, I'll steal these uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors that make up the input filtering of the vCore VRM on this card and just move them over to the memory VRM because they don't serve any functional purpose anymore and, you know... The, the memory v like the memory VRM looked like it's in like the input filtering capacitors for the memory VRM looked a bit lonely um, there's actually so the there's three pads here and you can kind of see that from the silk screen right like that's the silk screen uh, and yeah I squeezed four capacitors onto you know pads for three capacitors it's fine they're all in parallel anyway um, but yeah, they only, like, the originally the card only had two input filtering capacitors per memory phase. Well, now it has four. Um, 
I don't think that actually made much of a difference. Uh, usually upgrading the input filtering for on most cards doesn't really do anything, but I have these input filtering capacitors and they're not needed in the V-Core VRM anymore because they're literally not doing anything. So, you know, since I'm already like tearing the card apart as much as I am, why not move these? Uh, to somewhere where they might be more useful. And honestly, I could have moved even... Like, I could have moved all of them, probably. Because, um, yeah, I could have, like, added some more on the sides, but... And decided not to bother with that. Um, so, yeah, so those went missing. Because, um, you know, the V-Core VRM doesn't need them anymore, because it's not there, as you can see. So, that's with them removed. Um, wait. Uh, did I... Yeah, so you can see how they went missing. Because um, I moved them over to the memory VRM. Anyway, uh, at this point on the back of the card, I also noticed that, like, oh, um... Oh, I was going to pull up this photo anyway. Well, now we have it twice. It doesn't matter. Um, so while on the back of the card, I noticed that we have, like, this V-Core, uh, I guess, polygon plane... It's not really much of a plane, <laughs> but yeah, we have this like strip of V-Core over here. And I thought, you know, I could tie that directly into the inductor legs. I'm not sure if that would actually achieve much, but why not? Um, and uh, yeah, so I went ahead and uh, sandpapered that to be visible. And obviously I hit this trace over here, which uh, I don't know what that trace does, but it's not V-Core, so that needed to get masked off. So UV cure sol solder mask um, over that. And for curing that stuff, like originally, so the, the UV cure uh, solder mask that I'm using, it's mechanic branded. Um, and it came with a little UV like torch that runs on batteries. That torch sucks. I ended up buying a little USB-powered nail lamp. That thing works way better um, for, for curing the solder mask. So, um, yeah, I, w I would suggest that is, like, get, like, a UV, like, an actual UV lamp. Because um, that's just so much more convenient than having a little battery-powered torch. Especially because, as far as I know, UV LEDs aren't actually very power efficient. So they chug batteries, um, which sucks. So... Anyway, yeah, masked off the trace that I don't know what it's for, and then I threw a... Oh, we don't actually get to see that yet, but eventually I threw a copper plate. Oh. Par yeah, like, I forgot to take a photo of the copper plate that I threw over this, but basically I just put a copper plate that does that. And that eventually, like, later on that became useful for connecting other things, uh, as you will see once we get to that. Um, anyway... Um, so back to the front of the card, where we've got sanding to do. Um, so there we go. And now you can... Oh. Wait. Oh, I didn't sand it enough. Okay, I think... Yeah, I think this is actually 112 volt. Um, and this is another 12 volt. But yeah, you can see how this pad over here isn't connected to this pad over here. And that's because this is probably connected to the PCIe slot. So, um, like, I guess slot. And then this will be connected to one of the six pins. Um, and this is probably the entire reason that this VRM is where it is, because, you know, it's closer. Which is just like, I guess they didn't have enough layers to just, like, run the... Actually, they have to run the PCIe power to the memory VRM anyway. So, like, I actually just don't get what... Like... Like, I can understand why, say, an RX 480 has the vCore VRM uh, in this area. As much as I don't like it being in this area. And there it makes sense, because, like, half the vCore VRM runs off of the PCIe slot. But here, it's, like, one MOSFET. One. <laughs> So, yeah, not a fan. Also, fun fact about the RX 480, if you don't plug in that 6-pin, it literally just won't turn on. Uh, it won't give you an error message. So the whole, like... Um, and actually, I didn't check if this GTX 970 gives you an error message. 
Oh, well, doesn't matter. But it is a thing that I've seen on some NVIDIA cards. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, the idea here is quite simple. We need to mask this off, right? Because that's 12 volts. Um, this needs to get masked off as well. Um, this needs to get masked off. Uh, not these. Those don't matter, right? Like, these these are part of the switch node, right? Because the, the MOSFET connects like that. And then the low side MOSFETs connect like this. Um, and then to the, you know, inductor would be over here. Actually, the inductor was uh, SMD, not through all, but it doesn't matter. So the masking plan is basically mask off this, mask off that gate pin, mask off this, uh, mask this off too as well. I forget to do that, <laughs> which is really funny. I mask everything else, and then somehow I just, like, forgot about th this, uh, like, 12-volt pad over here, and yeah. Um... Other things that need to get masked off. Well, this needs to get masked off because it's not part of the V-Core power plane. Um, I don't know what this plane is, um, and it doesn't matter. We just mask that off as well. Or trace. Not really a plane. Um, yeah, I don't know what this this copper here is for, so that gets masked off. This is ground, right? So, yeah, this is the ground pad. So, um, we want that, but we don't want this. That's the gate pin, and that's the other one I don't think I mask that one off. Techni I think with the drivers removed, it might have probably been fine to actually, like, solder to the gate pins as well, but, eh, mask it off. Mask that off. Mask this off. Uh, mask these off. Um, mask whatever this is off. Uh, mask that off. And then we here we have more ground, so that just, I'm just going to be tying that back into the switch node. Mask all of this. Mask all of that. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not that inaccurate with my soldering, but, eh, like, a ma like, solder mask is cheap, um, and it's not like you're applying a thick layer of it, so, you know, th throw it over everything. Um, oh, and then this is, like, ground, of course, so we, we want that exposed. So that's the plan. And then with the V-Core power plane, um, things get annoying, because we have these, like, random dots in it. Um, especially these two make me quite upset, because I was like, oh, I'm gonna have, like, this really nice... Nope. <laughs> nope, th this gets masked off, and basically this area that I exposed gets completely... Un goes completely unused, uh, basically because once I mask these off, it's like, well, there's not really that much exposed copper here, so... Yeah. Anyway... So that's sort of the plan um, for the, uh, like, masking here. And then on the actual 780 Ti VRM, I have this idea of, like, well, if I'm using the uh, ground pads, like, if I'm, like, going to be connecting directly to the, like, ground vias of the uh, low-side MOSFETs on the GTX 970, couldn't I also do the same on the 780 Ti VRM? Because we have these, like... Like, the, the way this is laid out is, like, switch node, ground, right? And these vias right here, these go to the low-side MOSFETs onto the, on the 780 Ti V-Core VRM. So, basically, if I solder a connection to over here, this is, like, as direct a current path to the low-side MOSFET as possible. Right, because the alternative is like, yeah, I could connect to the ground legs of these capacitors over here, which is not great, and they're probably not designed to handle that. Like, the the, the connection those have probably isn't meant to handle a, a whole lot of current. Um, so then the current would basically have to travel like this, and then, you know, back to the switch node, and then, right? So I thought, hey, I'm just going to expose these, because, like, I can. Um... And then I just have to mask off the switch node. So I just ran over this with sandpaper. Also going to mask off this down here. Um, but yeah, just ran over it with sandpaper and exposed a whole bunch of ground um, directly to the low side MOSFETs, right? So we have like ground here, ground here, ground here, ground here, ground here, uh, ground here, here, and here. And technically I could have gone all the way to the top for the memory VRM as well, but... Um, the way things line up, it it doesn't like I I didn't figure I would actually benefit from that or and I don't I don't really have a good reason I just felt like this was like this is enough ground I feel like this is enough connections it'll be fine um, so 
So anyway, um, yeah, so sandpapered the 780 Ti VRM. Also at this point, I finally stripped off all of these multi-layer ceramics and realized that it would probably be a good idea to solder mask the edge of this thing, because uh, that's not solder masked. <laughs> Also, if you're wondering about, like, uh, cutting boards like this, and then, like, what do you, like, what about short circuits on the edge? Uh, that's not really a concern. You just run over it with sandpaper until there's no short circuits. Like, literally, you just take, like, a, uh, I don't know, like, a thousand grit, 1200 grit sound sandpaper, and you just run over the edge of the PCB until it's smooth and short circuit free. Um, and that's how I've done all of my, like, uh, VRM uh, theft operations, right? Anytime I've wanted to steal a VRM from a dead GPU, cut it with a hacksaw. You can also use a Dremel, uh, and then just sandpaper the edge until it's smooth and there aren't any short circuits. Um, and you just use the multimeter to check if there are short circuits. And if you get a short circuit, you just sandpaper it some more until there isn't any short circuits. Um, so, yeah, never had any issues with that. And I, a lot of the time I've actually run these completely exposed without the solder mask. Uh, but, yeah, uh, obviously better to solder mask it than just leave it exposed. So, that's the plan. Um, here's the actual solder mask on the 780 Ti. So you can see that I also masked off the, like, vias that are in the ground planes. I don't know what those vias are for, but they're not ground, so I don't really want to be connecting to them by accident. Uh, I also ended up uh, scraping away at the solder mask in between the inductor legs uh, on the output side um, so that I'd get a better connection to the like actual output. Um, I didn't do that with sandpaper, which is why it's so much like uglier than or like less smooth. Um, yeah, the thing is like getting sandpaper in between the inductor legs is just very awkward so anyway oh and you can also see the solder mask on the edge and this took forever to cure um this this is the part where i was like okay i i need something better than the little handheld uv torch um this is this is the part where i decided okay i need i need like a proper uv lamp because there's just so much uh solder mask that needs to get cured at the same time um Anyway, um, so that's masked off. Now we have also the GPU masked off. And yeah, like I said, like I forgot <laughs> for, for some bizarre reason, like I masked everything else that needed to get masked. And then I just forget about this 12 volt pad over here. Didn't forget about this one. Did forget about that one. Don't know why. This one got covered. But this one? No idea. I, I do not understand how my brain works. Um, like everything else, like this, you know, the little dots over here, that, that all got covered. And then th this, this 12 volt pad, eh, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like the, the, the solder mask is more of a convenience thing than an actual requirement. So yeah, no big deal there. Anyway, at this point, um, Man, I am really bad at taking progress photos. Anyway, um, so once everything was masked off, I started connecting things up to make connections. And this is just a whole bunch of like, so these are actually just used desoldering braid, right? Um, yeah, this is just like desoldering braid that I also used. At this point also I've washed the card, so you can see how it's like not du horribly dusty anymore. Um, but. Yeah, so use desoldering braid to basically tie the ground pads into the switch nodes and then sort of give myself like a nice big continuous like ground connection right here. At this point, I also realized like, wait a minute, we have all of these ground pads for the capacitors up front. I could probably make use of that as well. So I started using the, this, that's the tinned copper wire. That's not the desoldering braid. Um, and also I realized that, man, this gap is really fine. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was not happy about that. A bit late to real. Like, yeah, I, I, I realized that a bit late. Um, and then proceeded to do nothing about it, because like ultimately, like you know, we're talking low voltages here. As long as there isn't a short circuit, it's fine. Like, it doesn't matter if the, the two things are almost touching. If they're not touching, they're not touching, and therefore there's no short circuit. Um, so. Yeah, but not a fan of that. 
And you can sort of see that, like, here's another photo. So, like, I'm trying to build up basically, like, uh, raised points to connect to the uh, 780 Ti VRM, um, right? And that progressed uh, to this. So I'm not doing anything over here yet because I don't know where that is going to have to connect to on the 780 Ti um, vCore VRM. Um, and partway through this process, I actually realized that the, the front ground connection is actually like, I'm, I'm probably not actually going to make use of that. Um, so that, event, like, that gets partially, like, ditched partway through. Um, I think it's about this point when I realize, like, wait a minute, this, this isn't lining up. Like, I'm first going to line up the V-Core part, and this is basically, I'm just stacking these, uh, you know, strips of wire onto each other sideways to, to give this, like, raised section that I can actually get the V-Core VRM onto. Because the really annoying thing about the 780 Ti VRM that I'm using is that this is the V-Core, right? This is where the V-Core, like, output of the V-Core, like, this is where I need to make the connection. And we have all of this PCB in front of that. So I basically need to, like, you know, like, we need some kind of extension basically hanging off of there so that it can actually reach to here, uh, which is what I'm doing, right? That's That's the whole thing that I'm, like, building up slowly uh, bit by hit bit here, right? And it's like, and at this point, I think it actually was tall enough to get the initial connection set up. Um, yeah, so... Bam. Wait. This is like end. Did I seriously... Oh, I, I love... I love, <laughs> I love my documenting process. I forgot to take pictures, so... Yeah, this is, this is like the end result. Um... And I did end up using those ground connections on the front, uh, and there was some multi-layer ceramics over here that I ended up having to break off because I do have hot air, but they're right next to these aluminum polymers, and I am not, uh, a f like, these things, like, they're tough. They can take some pretty substantial abuse, but pointing hot air directly at them because you're trying to desolder some multi-layer ceramics right next to them is pretty much guaranteed to kill these. Um, so, no. Uh, I'm not doing that, and I ended up having to, like, break off the multi-layer ceramics, which I absolutely hated doing. Um, like, you know, I, I'm a bit of a... Um, well... Uh... I mean, you've seen everything else I've done to the card, right? Like sandpaper the freaking solar mask off, cut, hacksaw the V-Core VRM away, but then we get to like breaking multi-layer ceramics off, and and that's I am not a fan of doing that. I get really worried that they're gonna rip the pads off the board mainly. Um, but yeah, I ended up having to break them off because there's just no like I tried desoldering them, but like without like there's just not like space to do that because the thing is I, I decided to break them off after I had the 780 Ti VRM already attached to the GTX 970 so there just wasn't space to, to deal with them in any less barbaric way uh, hey I found the word I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a like tech barbarian with this kind of thing and yeah like don't like breaking multi-layer ceramics hacksaw PCB sure but breaking multi-layer ceramics with pliers not a fan Anyway, so this is the front connection. Here's the back. Um, this is the, the connection that's supposed to carry all of the power. Um, you can just about see the V-Core connection behind all of these ground connections. Uh, also, oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, I put a strip of the, like, uh, braided wire to connect all of the exposed grounds on the 780 Ti VRM together, and then just, you know soldered these into place wherever it felt convenient. I guess I could have added one more over here, but eh. Um, after taking the measurements, I'm not going to bother. I never did get around to masking this off. It doesn't matter, right? Like, it's not touching. There's no short circuit. Um, so, yeah. It's actually kind of funny how I, like, masked all of these off and then I didn't even throw anything. Like, over here, the solder mask is necessary because we have that, like 
wire running right over the top of everything, right, to connect all of the ground pads together. But, yeah, down here on the board, like, I, I really didn't have to go that heavy with the solder mask, apparently, but, eh. Better safe than sorry. Um, especially, like, 12 volts to... Actually, that probably would just trip the power supply's short circuit protection and it wouldn't really do anything, but, oh well. Anyway, uh, on the back of the card, I decided to throw on a power bridge. Because I have a sneaking... I had a sneaking suspicion that, you know, like, the... You know, this connection that I've made on the back and the and the front, right? Like, we've got this ground connection, we got that uh, big fat V-core connection hiding behind all these ground connections over here. I'm like, you know what? I bet most of the power loss in this uh, connection is not even going to happen in the connection. It's going to be, like, power loss between the VRM and the GPU core. It's not going to happen in this mess. It's going to happen in the PCB. Um, and so, uh, inspired by the Asus card with the copper plate connecting the V-Core VRM to the GPU core, which, incidentally, I've done this multiple times before, um, but yeah, inspired by Asus, I built my own little power bridge for this thing. And I've done this on other cards in the past, like I had a GTX 1080 that I e-powered where I did this, um, for the same reason, because, like, you know, you, you'd think that uh, you'd have a lot of power loss in the, like, connection from the power board to the GPU, and then when you take the measurements, you find out actually most of the power loss is in the board of the GPU, unless your, unless your connection is really terrible. But in this case, I think the connection is really solid, right? Like, there's a ton of ground, there's a huge V-core connection. Um, if there's going to be power loss, like, if there's going to be substantial power losses, it's going to be in the board in my, uh, in this scenario. In the original setup... Um, right, the very, very, like, the bare minimum of, like, oh, it turns on, I'm so happy, um, setup, which I started with, so not this one, uh, this, yes, this abomination, yeah, here, the connection, probably, uh, losing, like, a pretty substantial amount of power in this, but with the new connection, yeah, I don't, I don't think the new connection's gonna have a problem, so anyway, um, Oh no, I've made a mess of the layers. <laughs> I don't even know where we are. Uh, okay, at the power bridge. So, oh, and now you get to see the copper plate that I threw over the back of the card. Also, one thing I appreciate with NVIDIA cards is that because NVIDIA has these polymers directly behind the core, it makes setting up, like, DIY power bridges really convenient. With AMD GPUs doing this, is it, it's basically impossible because AMD likes to put only multi-layer ceramics directly behind the core. And you don't, you don't get big fat pads to connect big fat wires to, right? Like, you just have multi-layer ceramics. And multi-layer ceramics, which is the other reason I don't like power bridging AMD GPUs, they're not very physically robust. So if you connect a big fat wire to them and then you poke the wire, chances are it's going to break the multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Uh, in fact, that's the only way I've ever broken a multi-layer ceramic capacitor, is through physical stress. Like... Funnily enough, I've read a lot of, like, uh, warnings about, like, oh, if you're soldering multi-layer ceramics with a soldering iron, you'll, like, thermal shock them, and they'll crack, and then they'll die. Never had an issue with that. Um, also, like, oh, you don't want to overheat multi-layer ceramics with, like, hot air. And, like, the like I regularly steal multi-layer ceramic capacitors off of dead PCBs just because, like, well, they're there. And it takes a couple minutes to, like, strip all of them off, so why not? Uh, and then when I'm, you know, working on a card like this, I have, like, an endless supply of multi-layer ceramics from, like, dead HD 7970s and stuff. Um, so I don't really have to be fussy about, like, oh, does this really need more capacitors? It's like, well, I got them, <laughs> so why not? Um, which you can kind of see on the memory, going on on the, on the memory already. Actually... I'm pretty sure these extra multi-layer ceramics on the memory are actually... Yeah, those are the capacitors that I desoldered from the 980 Ti. Because I didn't originally... I think we might be able to see them in the this... Wait, which picture? This picture. Oh, no, you can't. They're, oh, no, you can just about see them. You can just about see them, right? There's there's still capacitors there. Those eventually got removed, and they got moved to the memory VR... Like, memory uh, filtering on the 970, because, like... They were getting in the way of the 
uh, solder mask and stuff, so... Yeah, since I'm removing them anyway, may as well use them. Um, where were we again? Man, I'm... I spent a lot of time, like, thinking about how do I want to structure this video, and eventually I decided to just give up about thinking about how I want to structure this video, and here we are. Oh, right, we were on the power bridge. So, anyway, so yeah, you can see, like, these multi-layer ceramics that I've just added randomly, because, like, I have them. Um, so, anyway, so this is it. And so I decided to test the card in this configuration, with, like, no bulk capacitors of its own. Because um, this was, like, one thing I was really wondering about is, like, okay, so I removed all those bulk capacitors on the front of the card because they were getting in the way, right? Like, w we had capacitors, like, right here where there's now a ground connection, and it's like, but, like, this has all these bulk capacitors, so, like, if if this connection has low enough inductance, uh, which it probably doesn't, because, um, like, sure, it's very thick, but it's also really spread apart, Um and for low inductance, you want your, like, ground and power planes as close together as possible, which this isn't. <laughs> this is just, like, I've, like, I can't really think of a way of getting around that, um, to be completely honest. Um, so, it is a very wide connection, but I don't necessarily think it's a particularly low inductance connection. But I was thinking, like, you know, I like, I was hoping that you know, it's so thick that maybe we'll be okay with the bulk capacitors just gone, right? Like, it'll, like, the voltage regulation, it'll, like, it won't be good, but it won't be completely disastrous, was my thought process. And so I decided to just run the card like this without, without any, any, really, like, any bulk capacitance on the PCB, on the 970 itself, Right, like the only bulk capacitance here is directly off the the V core VRM of the 780 Ti, so it's behind the uh, like connection that I made, and then that's it. Right, like the the only other like arguably bulk capacitance on the board is these polymers behind the core. Um, so let's take a look at the oscilloscope shots. So this is the original, right? This this is the very uh, like, th this is where I started. Um, that's with the 1.22 volts, considering that the board is outputting, like, 1.34. And this is after I redid the, redid the wiring. And so this has no bulk capacitors, right? This right here. This has no bulk capacitors. This has the bulk capacitors, but a really garbage connection. So let's take a look at the differences. So first of all, uh, average voltage. Oh, I need to merge these layers. Um, so first of all, the average voltage um, is significantly higher because we're losing a lot less voltage in the connection, right? So basically the connection is like 40 millivolts better. Um, and so we're still kind of losing like a lot of voltage. Um, you know, I should also point out that the oscilloscope, because of how it's connected to the card, measures a bit low. Um, on the average voltage, so I have like multimeter measurements that don't have that issue later, and so the average voltage here doesn't match like the average voltage from a multimeter measurement. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so we immediately see like, okay, the connection is losing less voltage, right? Like right off the bat, the average voltage is higher. That also means the transients are worse because the average voltage is higher, so the core is pulling more power, and we have no bulk capacitors, right? Like I removed them. And so what I find kind of neat is that the peak-to-peak -peak is not that much worse, right? Like, we went from, like, 334 millivolts at 1.22 average to 372, worst case, like, worst peak-to-peak, -peak, but at 1.26 average voltage. So that's really not that bad, and the minimums actually got better by 20 millivolts, by like 25 millivolts. Um, so a significant like improvement in, in power delivery, though the peak to peak is terrible. And what's kind of funny though, is like, so I'm saying like, oh yeah, the huge improvement, less voltage drop in the connection, like yeah, less voltage drop in the connection, uh, better minimum voltage at the core. Uh, it actually clocked worse. Um, 
yeah, like this this did this maxed out at like 1510. Funnily enough though, it scored the same as this which was hitting 1550. So, and my theory for why this card was like underperforming in the initial setup was that it was clock stretching. Um so I think that kind of confirms it cuz this is a thing that you'll like if you have clock stretching issues with Nvidia cards, what you basically get is insanely high clocks, but with like un but underperforming, right? So you get really good clocks, but the performance doesn't match the clocks that you're getting. And then if you uh, reduce the amount of clock stretching that's happening, the performance won't necessarily get better, but the clocks will get worse, <laughs> right? So I'm getting like similar performance, lower clocks, um, higher power consumption. So it's like, okay, it's not clocking any higher. It's actually clocking worse, but the performance hasn't gotten any worse, and the power consumption is up. So I've reduced the clock stretching, but the power delivery is still not good. Um, th this does need some cleaning up. Uh, and if you've followed this channel for long enough, then you know that I do like attaching capacitors to cards a lot. So that's the next thing I did is like, okay, so we have uh, measurements of this kind of sucks. Um, I mean, sure, I've solved the, like, voltage drop issues, but, like, the the voltage regulation is garbage. Actually, speaking of the voltage drop, um, I'm just going to copy-paste this into a text box because we're winging this video. Oh, that's actually a convenient font to be legible. Perfect. <laughs> Which is going to give myself a black background for it. If you're wondering why the font is impact, it's because I use GIMP to do the thumbnails when I do thumbnails. So here's the multimeter measurements. So the output voltage at the 780 Ti, and I'm just going to merge this down. So at the 780 Ti was, oh, and actually I have a picture for these measurements. Oh, this is going to be a, we need two pictures. Actually, no, I can do it with, can I do it with one? So here's the card actually in a system and running. <clears throat> also, this is the point when, like, I realized that, wait a minute, I don't know how I'm going to fit an LN2 pot. As you can see, though, yeah, like, that, that power board is really close to the, the core. So uh, getting an LN2 pot, well, it's just straight up not going to fit any of the GPU pots I have. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is run the card on a riser with, like, a CPU pot, which is going to be very fun. I'm sure that's going to go great. Um, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> so. Um, measurement points. I measured voltage uh, basically from like here to this pad. Because that's just more convenient. Uh, I measured here and these. Because these are ground. Right? Because those are the like switch node side of the capacitor legs. This is the V-Core side. Um, so this is V-Core at VRM. This is GN ground at VRM, at like stock VRM um, in my notes. Uh, this is at the core, right? So we're measuring from here to here. So basically we're measuring across this capacitor because this is a... Actually, wait, no, that's a ground pad because these are V-Core. No, that's V-Core. I'm stupid. Right, I mixed up my labeling. I, I pulled an Asus. <laughs> so, fun. So, here's a sort of annoying uh, marking thing with electronics components that you might not be aware of. Um, through hole capacitors and SMD polymers have completely different marking conventions. So, SMD polymers, this stripe indicates the voltage side of the capacitor. And this indicates, like, the, this is the positive and this is the negative end. This goes to ground, this goes to voltage. If you put it backwards, you're going to have current flowing through the capacitor. It's going to get very hot. And if you're really unlucky, it's going to, like, pop and burn. Um, also, it's going to die. Um, but, yeah, so voltage side, ground side. Um, through hole capacitors, on the other hand, work completely the opposite way. And I'm trying to find a picture of, okay... Yeah, so through through all capacitors, ground side, voltage side. That's not annoying at all, right? Like the 
you get the stripe on the ground side, whereas with the polymers, it's on the voltage side. Anyway, so I just completely mixed that up. Um, so that's volt, yeah. So in this photo, this end is positive, this pad is negative, um, then here we have negative, positive, V-core, uh, and then on the power board, here we have negative and here we have positive, right? So actually, you know what, I could have, oh, I didn't have to merge them down, I'm so stupid. Um, this video is such a mess. I'm having, I can have fun, and I, I'm having fun also doing this, this way. I don't know if this is going to be a permanent format at this point, but, well, it might. <laughs> it's actually the worst presentation style ever. Ugh. Grabbed the wrong layer. Okay, so, um, well, this ain't freaking working. I should have given myself more space. Oh, wait, we could just make this smaller. Yeah, that helps. And then remove alpha. Um, why is it that color? Much better. Oh, wait, I removed the alpha. I'm stupid. <laughs> um, give me a second. There. Um, now we can see everything. Somewhat less terribly. Um, wait, things moved. Okay, I'm just going to pull in another copy of that photo. Because, yeah, this one works. Um... So, basically, my measurement points are, so we have positive, like, V-core over here, negative there. Um, I really wish minus sign, like, negative was, I guess I could have used P and N, but, well, whatever. Or V and G. But, anyway, um, too light. We're doing plus and minus, so... Those are like, like the different measurement points, right? And the idea basically is like, I want to see what is the difference between, in the voltage on the ground plane between here and here, uh, here, and like V core between here and here, and then like here to here, here to here. So um, let's go through this. The voltage at the v output of the 780 Ti VRM, so in this area, was 1.344 volts right, from the notes. The voltage uh, behind the core was 1.284 volts, um, right? So we're losing like 100, wait, no, 60. We're losing 60 millivolts. Um, also, I should point out that technically these measurements don't completely line up together uh, because they weren't all taken at like the exact same load because I was looping fire strike on the GPU when taking these measurements. <clears throat> so, like, as the core heats up, it pulls more power. Also, Firestrike GT1 is relatively consistent, but there are some parts that pull more current than other parts. So these voltages aren't going to necessarily add up to each other perfectly. Um, but anyway, so core voltage to stock V-Core VRM voltage. So from this plus sign to this plus sign, there was a difference of... 30 millivolts. Uh, also, maybe I should have merged this down again so that I can actually cir circle things. But, yeah, so there was like a 30 millivolt difference between uh, this, whoa, between this point and this point, right? That was a 30 millivolt difference. So that is the kind of thing that the power bridge is, is supposed to reduce, right? It's supposed to reduce that voltage loss. Um, and it, like, I don't know how much it does because I didn't measure it without the power bridge and I'm not going to. <laughs> it's like, I don't really see the point. It's not like I'm going to remove the power bridge if I find I, it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, 
So it's it's just going to stay. So there's like a 30 millivolt drop just like on the board itself, right? That's my main point. Is like on the board itself with the power bridge, 30 millivolts just in the PCB. Bye bye. Um, now then, uh, stock VRM to E power. Uh, yeah. So from this plus sign to this plus sign, 9.8 millivolts. So basically, from like here to here, it's like 40. Right, it's like 40-ish millivolts. Um, and then from the core ground to the stock VRM ground, so from this minus sign to here, is 22 millivolts, which is insane to me because, like, it's a ground plane. Like, you'd think that there's just, like, a layer in this PCB that's just ground. Right? Like, I'm not even, like, I'm not even measuring to the, to the ground side, like, the side where the current is actually flowing into the power board. Right? I'm, I'm measuring on the back of the board. Um, and there's a 22 millivolt voltage drop. Um, actually, maybe some of that voltage drop is in the actual vias. Um, actually, no, it isn't, because I did take another measurement where I literally... Because I was looking at this like, well, couldn't I tie these through holes? Because, like, I was thinking, like, okay, there's not that many vias uh, stitching the, like, ground pads on the front of the card into the internal ground plane. So I basically got this idea, well, like, this is ground over here. There's, like, ground over here. Actually, no, that's not ground. This is ground. Um, something like that. It's, I'm pretty sure this is ground. And I was like, well, this lines up, like, awfully conveniently with this inductor hole. And, like, I could put, like, a little connection like this. And then we'd have, like, some, you know, more options for the current from the ground plane to flow into the, uh, like, because I am using these inductor pads, right? These inductor, uh, I mean, these inductor through holes are tied into that big freaking ground connection that I built on the... Uh, like that giant ground pad that I built for myself on the front of the card. So I was thinking like, well, some of that, like, because we're going to have current flowing through the ground plane, which is internal to the PCB. And then it hits these vias over here. And then it goes like that. And I was thinking like, well, it could also go like that. And that could maybe help slightly. Um, but then I took a measurement and there's like a two millivolt difference here. And it's like, okay, actually, I don't think it was even two millivolts. It was like less than a millivolt. And I'm like, okay, that's probably pointless. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we're losing like 20 milli, 22 millivolts in the ground plane of the GPU, which is just like, that is so much voltage as far as I'm concerned. Like that's, that's an absolute ton of voltage. Also, this is why I mentioned that the measurements don't really line up because they weren't all taken at the same time because I don't have that many multimeters. Um, so you'll notice that, like, yeah, there's only a 60 millivolt difference between the e-power and the core. Um, but there's, like, a... If we add all of this up, this is, like, 40... Like, from core... Um, like, from here to here, that's 30. To there is another 10 millivolts, so that's, like, 40 millivolts. Then v-core is, like, 22 millivolts just getting to the stock VRM, and then there, it's another 2.5 millivolts between here and here. Which I don't actually really get how that can only be 2.5 millivolts. But then again, these are very thick wires. And there is a lot of them. And there's also that ground connection on the front of the power board. So I guess the 2.5 millivolts there makes sense. Um, and anyway, so we'll call that like... Okay, so there's like 25 millivolts, um, you know, in th this loop from the core. And then... Or like this line from the core. It's not really a loop. It's not a closed circle, right? Closed circle would be including the positive end of the connection. And then this connection over here, that has like 40 millivolts of voltage drop. And if you add those two together, it's like 65 millivolts, which is more than the 3.44 to 1.284. But that's because all of these measurements were taken in different times. So there's going to be slightly different, you know, like there's slightly more or less current. And so at different times, the voltages are going to be quite a bit different. Um... And also, if I did, like, I didn't even take the two measurements for, like, V-Core at E-Power, V-Core at Core at the exact same time. Um, I don't have that many hands, even if I did have that many multimeters, which I do, but I don't have that many hands. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so the voltage, like, drops don't completely line up, but they're close enough. And, yeah, I gotta say, 
Like, I am not surprised that the biggest voltage drop is the 30 millivolts in the V-Core power plane of the board itself, of, like, the in the GTX 970 itself, but I am surprised by that 22 millivolts in the ground. Like, that is... Like, I, I've admittedly not taken this... Me I don't think I've taken this measurement very often for many GPUs, because usually it's not very big. <laughs> So I don't really have a comparison point off the top of my head, but I feel like 22 millivolts in the ground plane is is a is much. Like that's that's a lot. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, my connection from the the 780 Ti VRM to the GTX 970 that's actually really good, and most of the power loss between the core and the v core, the 780 Ti VRM is actually in the GTX 970 PCB. So it's not my fault, it's EVGA's fault, and I'm trying to fix it, which is why we've got that power bridge. Actually, after seeing this 22 millivolts, I was like, you know, maybe I should do, like, a, from this ground pad over here and to, like, these inductor legs, I could throw another power bridge. But... It's, it's just... Like, I, I think that might actually just be excessive. Like, it would help... But, like, I, I, I'm just feeling kind of silly about that. Um, and, the like, the thing is, the VRM can compensate for small voltage drops. So, I don't really see a point in, like, running even more wires. Because um, I also need to fit capacitors on here to, to clean up the oscilloscope measurements, right? So, let's get to adding more capacitors. Because uh, capacitors add I did. So many of them. Um, so I lifted the power bridge because it gets in the way of all the extra capacitors that I decided that I'm going to be adding. Um, and uh, yeah, so power bridge got lifted. And at this point I was like, oh, I'm just going to sandpaper this out. And then <clears throat> I'm going to just throw capacitors over this, like that kind of, right? I'm going to have a nice ground strip and I'm just going to throw capacitors at this. And because I had a bunch of like multi-layer ceramics that I pulled off of a dead HD7970 PCB. So this will be super convenient. And then I started sandpapering. And um, no, I am not going to do that because that via is not part of the ground plane. These aren't part of the ground plane. These are all like V-core connections. So it's like, oh, okay. Uh, change of plan. I'm still going to put a copper strip over this, but it's just going to tie directly into the available pads instead of trying to go into the ground plane because there's just too many random vias and I don't feel like doing any more solder masking if I can avoid it. Um, so, yeah, and then I forgot to take photos. <laughs> but you can see it hanging out over here, right? Like you can see that copper strip. And the solder mask to cover up that one hole I made. Also, I've already added some multi-layer ceramics to the unpopulated capacitor pads that the card already came with. Um, here you can see I built a little, built a pair of little skyscrapers of SMD polymers. These are also salvage capacitors, because um, yeah, SMD polymers are like kind of expensive, and uh, I don't really feel like putting expensive polymers on a GTX 970. Also, I added some multi-layer ceramics over here because this this is a V-Core pad. Oh, this also was unpopulated, and that's V-Core, so I populated that as well. Um, I mean, there's one pad, like there's only like pads for one capacitor, but I made it three because you know you can put stack them together sideways. I didn't stack any more over here because of this guy, um, and I didn't want to go up because they're so far away from the core that they're in like hazard territory of like I accidentally like bump into them with something and then they break and th th that would be bad so these are going to get get skyscrapered though or multi-storied um and then yeah we have this skyscraper and you might be wondering what this is and that's just a copper plate um that I bent into shape so that it actually connects both stacks um again if I wanted to connect the ground power bridge over like I could maybe connect it to that now um so it just gives me, like, more ground connection available for activities. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, also you'll notice that this copper plate is bent over, and that's just to remake the V-Corp bridge connection. So, um, that's on the back of the card. Oh, I also did this on the front of the card. 
right? So I have a copper plate that basically extends because there's like these SMD polymer uh, SMD polymer capacitor pads, and um, yeah, I decided like you know what I'm actually just going to throw a bunch of multi -layer, multi layer ceramics up here, um, and so I have a copper plate on one side which massively improves the solderability of this. Um, if you, if you've ever built a big, like, snake of multi-layer ceramics like this, you'll notice that as you get further and further away from the, the, the capacitor that's actually connecting to the board, uh, the solder has a tendency to melt on both sides of the multi-layer ceramics at some point, and that makes things kind of annoying. Um, because you'll, like, solder one side, and then you'll try to solder the other side, and the multi-layer ceramic will actually desolder itself on the other side because uh, the heat like transfers through the capacitor and not through the row uh, as quickly. Um, but yeah, this copper plate over here makes that basically a non-issue. Same over here. And these are, again, just salvage capacitors from a dead HD7970. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's kind of that. So, through that on the front. Um, and then on the back. Oh, and then I forgot to take photos for a while, because of course I did. I'm, I'm amazing at this. <laughs> You're wondering, like, well, Buildzoid, why don't you just record this with a camera? The thing is, uh, I don't use a microscope for soldering, and the camera would really just get in the way. So, also, like, I tend to go in, like, like, a lot of my soldering is, like, I spend a lot more time, like, thinking about where I want to put things than actually putting things on the board. Um, oh, this photo's awful. Why did... Oh, why is this here? Um, do I have better ones? I swear I retook it. Yeah, I did retake that. Um, so there, yeah. So now you can see how, like, um, well, the power bridge got reconnected... I stacked some multi-layer ceramics. I'm kind of considering adding a third one onto the ones nearest to the, like, polymer skyscrapers. Um, unfortunately, like, like I would be really tempted to actually, like, put three on top of the two that are at the bottom. But, I haven't checked this, but I would be really uh, unsurprised if these were actually uh, alternating polarity. Um, which is like a thing that is done on, on uh, capacitors behind uh, big power-hungry chips like GPUs um, because it helps with like the inductance of the PCB itself. Um, so it basically helps make the capacitors more, more effective. Um, and so like this will potentially, like I'm, I haven't checked, but it is pretty standard practice on a lot of GPUs that you'll have like plus minus and then plus minus. And then if you, like, so if you bridge these together, it'll just short out and not run. So, um, yeah, I haven't checked, but I, I'd be, like, I'm pretty sure that's actually how GTX 970s are done. Because um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I had the same idea with some other NVIDIA card and got annoyed for the exact same reason, where it's like, oh, these are alternating polarity. Which is a good thing, from, like, an electrical design perspective. Like, there's a, this is a thing that is done because it helps with the, uh, like, inductance of the PCB. But when you're stacking capacitors like this, it's just kind of annoying that you can't just bridge them all together. Um, but yeah. So that... Um, oh, this capacitor pad, like, I left that unpopulated because the coax would, like, melt if I used hot air. But on the other side, um, there's that, like, the same pad that's unpopulated over here. It's mirrored onto the other side. There I populated it with four, uh, four multi-layer ceramics. Uh, also, this monstrosity got added, because why not? Uh, that's a 2,000 microfarad, I think, 7 milliohm ESR uh, aluminum polymer. It's not, you know, it's not amazing. But it did actually help. Um, I, it wasn't in the first round of extra capacitors that I added. But it did actually make a measurable difference alongside some extra uh, bulk capacitance. Because the thing is, I felt like there's really not that much bulk capacitance on the board itself. Um, and it didn't even start with that much bulk capacitance. I really wish I knew what the voltage regulation looked like on a working GTX 970 SC instead of uh, this monstrosity. Like, I wonder how these cards ran when they were factory new. Because I imagine... Because, like, I'd like to know, did I do a better job than the factor, than, like, EVGA? Or is this still 
Like, am I still just trying to fix the problems that I've created by replacing the VRM? Um, cause I do wonder about that. Um, but anyway, uh, at the, uh, like plate side, uh, at like the, the stock VRM location, uh, I added these and apparently I am just completely incapable of taking a photo that actually shows everything that I've done. But, uh, yeah, so you can see how there's like polymers added and these multi-layer ceramics between the plates and multi-layer ceramics over there. So, yeah, just sort of threw lots of capacitors at everything. What did that do for the voltage regulation? Well, here's the uh, first round of extra capacitors. And this was where, like, most of the... Like, this is where all of the multi-layer ceramics got added. The polymer skyscrapers behind the core got added. Um, and this already looks pretty good. Um, yeah, like... 248 millivolts peak to peak max like there are cards that from the factory run worse than this significantly worse especially on nvidia cards so this is actually quite good the minimums are way better than they originally were right like for comparison here's here's the starting point um So, yeah, this is this is what I started with, right? This is before I added any capacitors at all, right? This is with, like, no bulk capacitors on the card. No no extra multi-layer ceramics, nothing. Just, like, the, the car, whatever the card came with, minus the capacitors I removed because they were getting in the way. Um, and this is after the first round of just adding, like, a bunch of multi-layer ceramics, the, uh, the, the polymers behind the core, um the SMD polymers behind the core. Not the big, big red one. The big red one wasn't there yet. Uh, and then, uh, I was like, okay, but what if I added even more bulk capacitance? Because I found some, uh, well, like, I found that big red one lying around on my desk. Um, th those big red capacitors, I, I bought, like, a ton of them years ago, and they got, they've been, like, filtering through various projects randomly. Um, so yeah, and so I threw one of those, like threw that big red one on, added some 560s as well at the, um, at the power, like uh, not be directly behind the core, but like further away. Um, one thing that kind of annoys me is that the coax is taking up valuable capacitor real estate, right? <laughs> like I'd love to add a capacitor, like add capacitors right here. But that would kind of invalidate the measurements from the coax if the coax is now connected directly to a capacitor when it previously wasn't. So, yeah. Um, anyway, once I take the coax off, I'm putting capacitors there. Um, probably not another one of these. Um, but actually... I've kind of run out of salvage polymers at this point, like salvaged SMD polymers at this point. So the thing with salvaging SMD polymers is that they're really easy to like cook by accident. Um, Cause they're like, they're actually really annoying to desolder and tantalum polymers. I've never actually successfully desolder a uh, tantalum without like, it po making a popping sound and then smelling really bad. Um, the SP caps from Panasonic, I have managed to desolder them a few times. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that they're that healthy after the desoldering process. They probably aren't doing that great, but they still work. Like they still, you know, like they still make a difference on the oscilloscope measurements. So like they're not completely dead. They're no, just not doing so great anymore. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, but then I also added just some regular, like, you know, uh, can capacitors like this, and that is where that fourth, um, last screenshot comes from on the oscilloscope. And, um, surprisingly enough, like, for this, I didn't even add any multilayer ceramics, right? So I really wasn't expecting a measurable improvement in minimum voltage, but there's, like, I mean, it's not a lot. It's honestly probably margin of error, but like six millivolts is, it's not nothing. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, I'm still kind of toying with the idea of throwing even more capacitors at this. Maybe. I'm kind of running out of space on the board. <laughs> oh, I'm not, not framing this very well. But yeah, like, I'm kind of thinking about maybe a little bit more. But then the issue is, like, I don't know what a GTX 970 should look like. Um, I do have some GTX 980s that are, like... No, yeah, so I, you know what, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of the GTX 980s I have, or, I'm saying 980s, like, I have multiple, but I'm pretty sure I only have one. So I could check the GTX 980 that I have. Though, actually, I think this is about on par with a GTX 960 that I have, that I have modified quite heavily. So this might actually be a decent result. Now, if only I knew where the screenshots of that GTX 970 were. And, like, that GTX 970 is on its own VRM, because that's the... That's one of the concerns with, like, power boarding cards like this. Is when you, like, cut the VRM... Like, when you replace the VRM like this... Uh, well, my main concern is, like, what does it do to the voltage regulation? Because it's like, okay, we can now deliver way more power than the original VRM ever could, right? I mean, the the original VRM on this card bar could barely sustain stock operation, which is why it died after a few years. Um, and so, like, now we've gone, we've gone from, like, a garbage four-phase to a very solid eight-phase VRM. This isn't the greatest eight-phase to ever be attached to a GPU, but it is a very capable eight-phase VRM, and... Uh, I do have a heatsink for it, so, I mean, it's not installed here, um, but I could put the VRM heatsink on this, and so from, like, a power delivery perspective, I can deliver way more power to the GPU core than ever, like, than the original VRM ever could. The question now is, like, yeah, but, uh, how's the voltage regulation, right? Because it's like, okay, so I can deliver, I don't know, let's say 300 amps for a short period of time. I'm not sure... This is an 8 phase. I think with a fan directly pointed at it, it should do 300 amps. Um, so let's say I can now do like 300 amps sustained. Um, or even more than that for short benchmarks. Um, and that's great and all. Whereas the 4 phase was probably good for maybe 200 amps. Like 50 amps per phase is actually quite high um generally speaking like in in like real like yeah it is just generally quite high um like 50 amp inductors aren't exactly uh budget parts let's say um so yeah so it's like okay i can deliver way more current but if there's like you know 400 500 millivolts peak to peak the card is going to clock like trash because, sure, it's not going to blow the VRM up anymore, but the voltage regulation is terrible. So it's like, okay, we can deliver more power, but you need to also have the, the voltage regulation. And that's one of the main concerns with, like, uh, with uh, doing e-powers like this, is like, okay, so you fixed the... Because there's quite a lot of old GPUs where, like, the main issue with pushing them, especially on liquid nitrogen, is that the VRM is going to die. Um, that's not even like, oh, if you do... No, it's going to die. <laughs> like, 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 this card is a perfect example of this. This died on air cooling. Imagine what would happen... Like, on LN2, it wouldn't last... Like, you'd maybe get Fire Strike to start, and then you immediately get the MOSFET going, right? Um... And then there's, like, reference 980 Ti's, where very regularly the vCore VRM likes to die. If you take one of those on liquid nitrogen, the VRM dies. You take a GTX Titan on liquid nitrogen, the VRM will die. You take a GTX 590... Actually, you take a GTX 590 and you remove the voltage restrictions that NVIDIA gives that card, and it will die on air cooling. Like, that VRM will not survive, I think, more than, like, 1.1 volts. Actually, even at 1.1 volts, it is really on the edge. So there's a lot of these old cards that are, in my opinion, really fun to overclock. I mean, 900 series isn't that great because it doesn't scale with voltage until it's well below zero degrees. But um, there's like a Kepler Titan 
would be pretty fun to push. Um, but yeah, the VRM on that thing kind of sucks from like a current handling capacity perspective. But then the question is like, okay, so you replace the, like you fix the current handling problem, but the voltage regulation. So that's like my main concern with this is like, you know, like, yeah, okay, we've got way more power delivery, but I am not sure, I'm like the oscilloscope shots, like they don't look horrendous. Like I have seen factory cards that are worse than this, but is it any good, <laughs> right? Like my goal here isn't better than the absolute bare minimum that NVIDIA is willing to, you know, um, allow. Because with NVIDIA cards, like NVIDIA is, has a pretty tight, uh, like has quite a lot of control over the uh, like board design. Like they 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 won't approve uh, a lot of like like they have pretty tight control over the board designs. So they don't necessarily, and NVIDIA doesn't necessarily concern itself themselves uh, with uh, the VRM being able to handle extreme overclocking, but they do concern themselves with. You know, like, there, there's a voltage regulation spec that you need to meet, because otherwise the chip won't run properly at stock settings. Um, and so, but the thing is, NVIDIA's bare minimum, based on some of the cards I've seen on the oscilloscope, is, like, it's bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't really want to be comparing myself to that. Um, but then with GTX 970s, which is kind of annoying, uh, and this is just kind of annoying... You can't really get GTX 970s with good vCore VRMs. Like, they just don't exist. Most of the cards have some basically, like, four, like they'll have, like, four-phase VRMs that are basically what this GTX 970 came with. Maybe slightly better cooling. And it's just like, yeah, so you can't just... Like, if you're thinking of, like, oh, I want to push a GTX 970 on liquid nitrogen... There's not a lot of options in terms of, like, getting a GTX 970 with good power delivery, annoyingly enough. So, yeah, anyway, um, I'm not finished with this thing, as you can probably tell, because I, I am still toying with the idea of maybe trying to clean up the V-Core power delivery a bit more. I haven't done a forward voltage sense yet, so currently uh, the VRM controller... Um, it's uh, regulating against its own output. It's not regulating against the voltage at the core, uh, which basically acts like some like hardware level V droop, like physical. Like basically, right now I have physical V droop instead of programmable V droop. So I want to add forward voltage sense. Uh, also, this controller is an ASP twelve twelve, so it's actually um, controllable with the Elmore EVC two. Uh, and there is a convenient header right over here. This is one of the nice benefits of, like, ripping this VRM off of a GTX, like an Asus GTX 780 Ti um, direct to you, too, because you get that header directly for the controller. So, like, hooking up an EVC2 to this is really, really convenient. And there are, like, like, there is a lot of AMD GPUs that'll have a header for accessing the VRM controllers, but that header will often be very near the core. So if you cut the VRM, that header is gone. <laughs> Which is really annoying. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, I have added a header, and uh, the controller is an ASP1212, which is actually a Chill 8318 rebrand. So this is an HC, uh, CHL8318, which is the same kind of controller that you'd find on most high-end uh, 780, 780 Ti, 980 Ti, I think even 680s. Um, so yeah, this is like the controller that you'd find on like a GTX 980 Ti Classified. So very popular controller for high-end NVIDIA cards of that time. Um, so like GDDR, yeah, like GDDR5, GDDR5 era uh, NVIDIA cards. I think the 8318 might have even also gotten used on some 1080 Ti's. Um, yeah, I think that was still the 8318 on 1080 Ti's. Anyway, um... So yeah, I want to add forward voltage sense. I don't have memory voltage control yet. I don't have PLL voltage control. So I'm thinking of adding those. I mean, PEX voltage control. So yeah, I'm thinking of adding those. Uh, I want to add more capacitors to the memory power delivery. I haven't like been taking oscilloscope shots of the memory power delivery yet, but I do want to do that. 
Um, cause Samsung memory chips, they scale with voltage. They can scale with, uh, like if it scales with voltage, it can scale with better voltage regulation. Right. So yeah, I do want to look into how the, like how, like how good the power delivery is for the memory chips, not in terms of current draw, like a two phase memory VRM for two gigs of GDDR5. I mean, not two gigs, but 256 bit, uh, memory controller. Like that should be more than enough. Um, if, like, I could also maybe, like, stick a heatsink to the memory VRM somehow, right? Like, oh, I don't have a good picture of it. I'm really not, like, not very good at this whole uh, planning videos <laughs> thing. Anyway, but yeah, like, I could totally strap a heatsink to that somehow. There's, like, no screw hole down here. I was hoping, like, you know, put the heatsink like this and then just have, like, a zip tie just to hold it like that something, but th there's there's nothing there. Um, wait, maybe the... Oh, the photo cuts off too early, and I don't think I have a full, full picture of the... No, I don't. Is there really no screw hole? No, there is a screw hole. So, yeah, I guess what I could do is, like, um... Where's that photo now? Oh, I'm an idiot. There. Um, nope, still an idiot. Just, there we go. Um, yeah, so I do have a screw hole down here, and the MOSFETs are right here, conveniently indicated by those input filtering capacitors. So yeah, I could probably just tie a heatsink over it, and then it's like, that's good. Um, so yeah, I'm not really concerned about the, the memory VRM uh, power situation. That's not a concern. <coughs> But, um, and I find this kind of funny because I also have a dead GTX 970 FTW from EVGA. And one of the sort of interesting differences that I noticed is a lot of these capacitor pads that are unpopulated on, on this card. Yeah, they're, they're populated on the FTW. Um, so just goes to show the kind of cost savings they have between the different tiers of, of uh, GPU, I guess. Though that FTW isn't working because the vCore VRM blew up again. So, like, yeah, they didn't cut as many corners on the filtering for the... Actually, they also populated these capacitors and that guy and this one and I guess maybe these? Not sure. So, like, the, the FTW has, like, more filtering capacitors on it, but they still didn't fix the VRM situation. They did add a heatsink this time. It does... It has, uh, by heatsink, it's a plate. It doesn't have any fins. Tech, that technology wasn't discovered by EVGA until the 10, 10 series. <laughs> Seriously, that's like standard uh, old EVGA cards. That, like, if they have VRM cooling, then it's literally just a plate. Um, yeah. Without fins on it. Anyway, um... Which is why, like, the other, uh, well, why, like, dead EVGA 980 Ti's are extremely common. Because the, the VRM on those cards, like, it's not very good, and then it, and the EVGA version of the 980 Ti also has less cooling. Because at least the blower, I mean, the blower cards kind of only have a plate as well, but, like, the blower, like, it ties into the body of the heatsink, so... That might be somewhat better for cooling than the plate that EVGA likes to put on their cards, but anyway, so yeah, I wanna wanna mess around with like improving the memory power delivery as well, uh, getting voltage control on the memory, so figuring out um, what like what pin on this chip to, and I'm just gonna use a potentiometer for that. Um, there's a switch on this thing. I don't think it has dual BIOS, does it? What is that switch for? Yeah, I don't see a second BIOS chip, so that is... Interesting. I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> I only just noticed that there's a switch there. Anyway, um, actually a pair of switches, but... Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, what I've done with this card. Um, and yeah, like, so if anybody was wondering, this whole idea of, like, tying directly into the the low side MOSFETs of an e-power, actually a good idea. Like, if you have a board where you can conveniently do this, uh, I think, 
honestly consider doing it. Like it's it's quite convenient. Um and it seems to work really well. Um Yeah. So anyway, um that's that. And then once I'm like finished with uh, all of the sort of modifications that I like the memory, like mainly like the memory voltage control, uh, also the forward voltage sense. <clears throat> um, I think I will do a live stream with this card, just like pushing it on, on the air cooler. Uh, one thing I will point out is that running the air cooler upside down like this is really not good for the heat pipes. <laughs> they are basically non-functional. So any sustained load, like a few minutes, uh, is a problem with the heatsink in this orientation. Um, for short benchmarks like Fire Strike, it's fine. But long, like when I was taking the measurements, uh, one of the annoying things that I ran into is the card ended up thermal throttling at one point um, because I was taking so long to take my measurements and it was just a looping Fire Strike. And basically in this orientation, the heat pipes eventually just gave up. Uh, like, they dried out, so, um, yeah, because, like, heat pipes do have a wick in them, so they're not completely dependent on gravity, but that doesn't mean you get to run them upside down. Um, like, th they can resist gravity to some extent, but not, you know, upside down is not good. <laughs> um, anyway, um, cause this is like very upside down. Like basically the core is actually higher than the bottom of the, of the heat pipes in this orientation. This is about as upside down as you can get that heat sink. So, um, yeah, this doesn't do well for sustained load, but I do want to like, I, I do want to try bench the card for just fire strike and see how well I, how far I can push it. Um, once I'm done with all of the modifications. Unfortunately, doing modifications like this on camera is just, like, I don't like doing it. I find the camera just gets in the way, and I'm like, I get really nervous <laughs> for some reason. So, yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, this video is now way too damn long, so hopefully you found it interesting. Um, I mean, if you've been here for the last two hours, then I'm, I'm get, like basically two hours, I'm guessing you did find it interesting. Uh, and maybe you even found it helpful if you're trying to zombify your own GTX whatever. Um, actually, I didn't even really go over the complicated parts of zombifying a card, which is mainly getting it to turn on after you decide to replace the VRM. Actually, with this card, it's really easy. You just desolder the VRM controller and everything works. <laughs> which is uh, kind of neat. There's other cards where you need to, like hot wa like there's like a bunch of enable signals that you need to trick into working and then there's these like evga gtx 970s where like you just desolder the vrm controller and bam memory turns on uh pex turns on everything turns on everything works a and all you need to do is desolder the vrm controller so that's really cool um but anyway um yeah, that's it. So hopefully you found this interesting um, and maybe even helpful. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. There's a link to that down in the description below. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching and goodbye.